Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I promise no failure this time as opposed to the other few videos that I just posted. Today we're going to go over how to, let's just say mid-season maintain something important to your race car if you've got it, your carburetor. If this is your first time watching, thank you all. Again, I really appreciate it. Subscribe if you'd like. If you see something you like in the back catalog, that'd be awesome. Like I said, today we're going to not fail because I'm sick of failure. We're done with failure, okay? It's just up from here. Today I'm going to show you how to maintain your racing carburetor. Now what I've got is I've got two different types of carburetor that are on my car. What a lot of people in short track racing, and especially in my area, run is something like this. It is a Holley 4412. It's a two-barrel carburetor, and obviously we're not allowed to really do anything to it, except for just practical rebuilds. However, what I have is this. Inside this box, that's a hint. is this a holly 650 this is a holly i think it's a 80541-1 or 80541 or something like that whatever it is it's a, <laughs> it's a 650 hp holly now as this was already off of my car i figured we'll just deal with this one instead because it's literally the same inner workings sorry about the noise as the two barrel it's basically just two halves of it instead of just one so like i said this is a double pumper it's gonna have metering blocks on both sides it's got center hung float bowls on both sides it's literally the same thing as the two barrel 4412 just there's twice as much stuff in it that's literally all it is Obviously, it's disclaimer time. I am not certified, I guess would be the great name for it. Uh, I'm not a Holly tech because these are Holly carburetors. And I'll be honest with you, I won't run any other carburetors. I love Holly carburetors. Um, they're great. They just work if you maintain them. They're fine. They're perfect. I love them. Um... This might not be the approved method. I'm not sure what that approved method would be, but um, this is how I do it. I have good luck with it. They stay very consistent and I never have carb problems. I usually blow a distributor, <laughs> not a carburetor. So um, yeah, let's, yeah, I'm not gonna show you how to touch distributors. They're all magic. So um, that's probably why I have so many problems with them. But anyway, I'm gonna pull this out of the box, show you exactly what I use not what you should use. Again, I'm not like not a mechanic or anything. This is just me being a racer for 20 years. I'm going to show you what I do to clean up a carburetor. Now, you're not going to need a lot of tools to do this job. What I use is my race car as a table. You don't need a race car just to clean a carburetor, but you know, it doesn't hurt. I use carb cleaner. Obviously, I have a big wrench for power valves in case you want to pull those out to clean in there. And obviously some kind of socket or some kind of wrench to get the bolts off of your bowls. <laughs> and that's pretty much it. Oh, and um, rags and safety glasses. These are not safety glasses these are just glasses but and i know i sound like some kind of osha regulator or something or inspector or whatever but when you're taking carb cleaner and you're spraying out like i'll show you later you're spraying out the metering blocks the main body everything there's going to be some weird orifice where you forget where it goes and you spray into it and it fires directly at your face because you weren't paying attention or just didn't know where that went which, again, I'll show you, but it's a good thing to have your face covered just in case you do not want carb cleaner in your eyes. It burns like hell, and it's probably bad for you. 
So taking it apart, I know I got a 3 8 ratchet dumbed down to a quarter inch, but these are typically 8 millimeter works the best. I mean, if you got a 5 16 that'll obviously work too. But uh, I loaned this carburetor to my buddy, and he ran it in uh, open street stock race a few weeks ago. So I wanted to take it apart and clean it out before I stuck it back on the shelf. But all these bolts here, just your standard bowl. You know, they have little O-rings on them. You can see them. Make sure they all come off. You don't want to lose any. You know, some of those were actually like cork back in the day, and they were just god-awful. Uh, let's see. So you get the thing off. You make sure all your gaskets are off. That's good. Now, it doesn't come apart, right? Oh, well. Now, now it does. All right, so this would be... Looks like my primary side, which would be okay, anything in there. Wow, this thing is completely drained out. That's pretty good. Oh, I took and I safety wired the accelerator pump arm just in case, you know, that little roll pin that they punch into it ever vibrated out. I don't want no accelerator pump while racing, so I did that to myself. Anyway, also, this is for my buddy Phil. Brass sight plugs. You don't need clear ones. They suck. They degrade with fuel. If you need to check your float level, just get a damn screwdriver. It's not that bad. All right. Let's see if I can't. We should add small screwdriver into the tools list because sometimes you just got to just barely break that bond of the gasket. There we go. And there you have it. You're looking at a carburetor metering block. I don't even remember what's in here. Oh, okay. What the hell jet's in it? Oh. Okay then. I don't know. Seemed to pull like a train. So, anyway. These gaskets are typically reusable sometimes, but you got to be real careful with them. Yeah, all right. Oh, I don't like the red ones. Oh, that came apart. Yeah, that's why I don't like the red ones. The blue holly ones are better, so I'll be spending some time getting that off. Before we go any further, you may be asking, well, why do you have to do this type of maintenance? Don't you have an air cleaner on the car? And the answer is yes. However, I have this demonstration piece right here that I will show you. There are reasons why you would want to go through and clean it out every once in a while, regardless of having an air filter on your engine. And I have this demonstration unit sitting right here. Now you see all this dirt and grime and stuff on the gasket? Well, that is all vibration related. Typically, you're on the racetrack, you're going really fast, somebody wrecks or somebody spins in the infield, or some, there's any number of reasons as to why there's going to be dirt and stuff on the racetrack. That dirt's going to fly everywhere because you don't have fender wells, you don't have anything. And the vibration, when that stuff sits or it hits your air cleaner, goes down into the base or up wherever, and it vibrates and it finds its way in through even if the gasket's tight. I mean, why would it be in here otherwise? Like, I always take the air cleaner base off and I blow it out especially in the channels, because that accumulates dirt with how much particulates floating around. And if your air cleaner is blown out like mine, dirt will get in. It'll find its way in. So you want to do this because there's many little orifices that can collect any number of garbage, varnish, dirt, dust, rubber pieces, doesn't matter. And you need to get it out to have your carburetor working properly. Obviously, this is my other carburetor, so I'm not really giving any secrets out here. So, <laughs> Basically, what a carburetor does is it's drawing air through it using manifold vacuum underneath it because the engine's turning, and it draws fuel and air in. It emulsifies all the fuel. It gets everything through all these little passages and ports, and it pulls it through top and bottom of the carburetor in certain places or it squirts out of it and whatever because that's what your accelerator pump does is it pushes fuel through here 
to get your car to take off when you initially hit the throttle. Obviously, I don't think anybody's really here for a carb tutorial. If, if you are, then I can probably try to give one as best I can, but obviously there's a lot of different ones out there. So um, it's drawing air and fuel in through the circuitry and through the top where the air cleaner is. So it's pulling air. Now, obviously, what's in the air, there's going to be something. If you have a like a top, I can't find one right now, but if you have a top nut on it that's maybe not completely sealed off, it could be drawing stuff in through that. If you have a blown out air filter, you could have any number of things. Like if you look in this thing, you can see, even in a box, it might have a little bit of extra particulate or dust or anything, even if you had a nice air cleaner sitting on it. So let's go through the circuitry and I will show you how to clean one out. I'm only going to do one side because it's the same on the other side, I should now that we've got it apart and we got the um, we got the metering block here, let me just widen this out here. Metering block here, carb base here. We can see all the different ports and circuitries and all sorts of stuff in here. Got it. So what you do is, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I don't know this, hang on a second. Yeah, I had to get the microphone in there. I don't know, it just sounds a little crusty. I might put a different power valve in here. Might not because it would just sit there and do nothing because I don't use this carburetor. So what I'll do is we'll, I want to get every circuit because I think that all the fuel in this thing kind of, that was really easy to take off. That's alarming. Um, but anyway, I want to be able to get every single circuit and I want to look at this and there is some definite, like, kind of looks like corrosion on my, on the, you know, where it seats on my needle valve, or my needle valve, <laughs> on my uh, power valve here. It kind of looks a little weird. So this is a good reason to take these apart. Here's your gasket. Don't forget that guy. So what I usually do is I just kind of take this thing and I jam it in a hole. Oh, there's some. And I fire it in, you know. Just do that to every single orifice that you see. And you can see how it kind of blows out of every hole here. There it is. That tasted good. Luckily, did not get in my eye. Face burns a little, though. See, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for bubbling out of every orifice. Like you pour it down in here, you can see it come out of the power valve circuit. You can see it come out of all these other ones and the emulsion holes and everything. So that's good. I'm going to spray a little bit more delicately, I think. All right. Last side, I'll go through the jets. If you want, you can take them out, but don't matter to me. This way I know at least something's not going to blow in my face. All right. Now the last thing I do is, I don't know if this is actually approved or not, but I take my little air blower here and I just kind of blow all the circuits dry. Oh, I'm getting stuff all over my car. This way, at least now everything is completely cleaned out. Every circuit is now completely clear. Now sometimes I'll be at the racetrack and I'll see guys taking a can of carb cleaner to their car because it runs like crap and they're just sticking stuff into the hole here and they're just firing it in and it's like well you know if that's the problem where is whatever that debris or other stuff that you've got going on there what's that doing going into the carburetor
So you're just basically forcing it down through the circuitry. But what you want to really do is you want to take and you want to actually go about it a different way. What you do is you take your meter and block off, you take everything apart, you find the hole, and you blow it out from the inside. So that if there's something clogging it up, it's coming out instead of going in. But you always want to go through your air bleeds and whatever is over here to make sure that you've got every orifice clean because what a carburetor is, and I'm getting carb cleaner all over my car and all the paint's coming off. <laughs> I guess I don't wrap my cars. They are painted with spray paint because I'm too cheap. But what a carburetor is, is it is literally a controlled leak. And that's such a highly calibrated leak that it needs to be free of dirt, debris, anything in its way for you to have proper fueling and proper performance. So when it comes to having a clean carburetor, you have to do it like it is, in my mind, completely necessary. So I'm going to blow this thing out. And then we're going to reassemble it. And the final thing that you want to do before you reassemble is just completely hose the insides out. Open them up. Let them flow free. That's it. Then you blow it out dry. And there you have it. Now I just got to assemble. I hope you can see this stuff. I don't know what this is, but it's some kind of cloudy, milky, sediment-laced stuff that came out when I foam or when I completely hosed the inside of the carburetor down prior to reassembly. Sorry for uh, moving the camera all over on you, but reassembly just as easy as when you took it apart. Gaskets, yes, I know. Same gasket, but these are reusable if you don't ruin them. So that's not bad. I got a new one for the other side because I did ruin that one. Well, I didn't, but it was stuck. So I claim that it was ruined. All right, see how it, see how it goes on like one way. There's an offset pin here and here on a holly. I just tried to put it on this way, and uh, the holes mostly lined up, but not really. Flipped it over. Now the pins go through the gasket. And it looks like all the holes are there. So I think I'm just going to take well one more look at it just to make sure. Hmm, that's odd. I'm seeing this one's open, but this one's not. Now I want to go back and make sure that my gasket was the same one. This is something that you really do want to go through because if it's not quite right, Well, it looks like it's the same one. All right. I mean, hang on. Now I got to do some research. Okay, all the rest of the gaskets that I have look exactly the same, so I guess I'm just going to have to go with it. And besides, I don't see where anything really matches up on the block here, except for it's basically just going to close off that port completely. So whatever, we'll just move on. Obviously, this thing's got the locator pins like I showed you. They're offset. It can only go on one way. Put your bowl on. Make sure your pump arm is up. Okay? Got to make sure your accelerator levers or accelerator pump levers down. Kind of hold that up like that and uh, there you go. Now it's on. That was not difficult at all. You feed your bolts in. There's probably, I don't know, one, two, three, maybe three helicoils in this carburetor. So, you know, at any moment, I could actually be putting another one in. I literally have a pack of helicoils in my toolbox at the racetrack just for, like, the kit. Like, the drill, the, the tap, the helicoil tools, all the little inserts. I literally have a pack of those. 
that I bring to the racetrack because I'm like, well, I'm not getting stuck here with this helicoiled, you know, crap nonsense. There it is. Sorry, I was looking for my tool. I had a, a bolt strip out on me on this carburetor once, and I didn't have the helicoil kit with me. So I literally had to perform absolute magic by taking, and I'll show you once I get this one tight. I had, I think it was like this one right here. And I had this fuel inlet right here. So what I did was I took a hose clamp, you know how it's got a little bul bulby end on it? I clamped it onto this, rotated it around, and pushed it in so it would hold this bolt in and like hold the gasket in so it wouldn't leak. And then I tightened it as hard as I could and it got me through the race. So tighten this down very gingerly just until it starts to click the gaskets and you're done. So there you have it. A clean carburetor <laughs> ready to just go back in the box. But it's ready to race if I ever need it to. Maybe someday I'll need to again. But, you know, for now my 4150 is just going to sit in the box and back on the shelf over there and at least I'll have the frame of mind knowing that this thing is clean. I already cleaned this one. It's already ready to go so this one's good to go for whenever I need it. Before I go I'll show you what I bring with me to the track in terms of carb thread repair kits. This is labeled Carburetor Accelerator Discharge. Why do I have this? Well, I'm one of the few people that I know who has stripped out the screw for the discharge nozzle. Notice that this one is regular and this one's uh, one of them high flow ones. Well, that's because there's a freaking helicoil in it. And I decided I would get one with the little hole in the middle to try to actually get fuel past that and into the squirters and it works just fine so that's good but if you ever strip one of these out on a holly the accelerator pump discharge don't throw the main body away get a high flow uh bolt kit they're pretty cheap and a 12-28 it's a unf thread it's like a you get a you gotta have like a 15 64th drill bit but these guys make a thread repair kit like i said it's unf 12-28 they sell these Amazon or wherever the hell you can find them that's I think where I got mine and the carburetor bolts they tend to strip out more than anything else in the world so you want a 1224 thread repair kit see I got helicoils and stuff in there ready to go I got the drill I got the tool I got the tap so that's what I bring with me to the track just to save me from any sort of headache, heartache, or problems. So I was putting this stuff away, and I found this in my toolbox. It's a nicotine patch. Like, I don't smoke. Why is this in here? But anyway, so there you have it for this week. I mean, a nice short video telling you how to keep your stuff together and how to maintain just on a budget, you know. Like I said, if you got a race car and you got a carburetor on it, you're going to want to maintain that thing. Especially if you're running pump gas or anything like that in a mixture or even straight up. Um, if you run any sort of pump gas in your carburetor nowadays, you got to drain it out like every single time. So what I would do is just pull the bottom bolt off the, the bowl here. And then I would just take air and I would force it into the, uh, to the, the vent for the bowl and just force air out of there as much as possible. Because ethanol, if you're using pump gas, is very corrosive to carburetors. So drain that out, you know, or if it evaporates out, you'll see a like a green kind of disgusting corrosion, you know, all this other nonsense. It's just really bad, get it out. If you're using race gas, it can evaporate out without ethanol in it. Anything with ethanol, get it the hell out of your carburetor. But I hope this was informational in any way. This is just what I do. You know, I'm not saying that this is what you should do. I'm just saying this is what I do. I'm offering up this info just because I figured there might be somebody out there who could use it. And uh, I wish this was the kind of stuff that people taught me before I had to learn the hard way and have all these problems ahead of time and then learn how to 
increase my maintenance program. So go through your carburetor if you're a racer. Heck, do it weekly. It won't hurt. Um, unless you take the base off and screw that up, and then I'm completely stuffed. But um, <laughs> don't ask me about the intricate workings of a carburetor, like even the base plate stuff. I don't even ask. Um, I have a carb guy for that. So thank you all for watching. Again, I really hope this helps somebody. It's just one of the steps that I put on my whiteboard every week, and it's to clean the carburetor and check the air filter. Because any little failure could cause you big headaches. I remember, here's a quick story. Um, my second ever race in a Saturday night division, which was, I think I had a Mustang mini stock at Thompson in probably 2008. And I think the carb stud came loose. And I think the quarter 20 nut holding it on fell into my engine because Coming out of turn four on the last lap, my car lays over really hard and it starts huffing smoke out the tailpipe. Luckily for me, it was a forged piston. So it left a six-sided hexagonal hole right through the top of a piston. Did not really blow up the engine. We took the piston out, cleaned it up and everything, but that's a failure that I could have prevented if I had my hands in the carburetor and I saw that there was a loose stud. Does it pertain to this video? But nope, but it would have led to fixing it. So keep it clean and it'll run forever. So thank you all for watching. I greatly appreciate it. Please subscribe if you would feel so kind as to do that. I'm trying to bring this channel up as much as possible because I would really like it to pay my racing bills. That's literally all I want to do is just build it up enough that I can get ad revenue and pay off my racing bills. I don't want to make a living doing it. I don't care. I have a, I have a career. I just want to go racing. That's all I want to do. And um, this might help someday. So again, thank you. I appreciate it. I'll see you next time.